So, do you want to be a better programmer on Roblox? Then welcome, I'm Paul and I will try to help you with that. And here are things to avoid as a Roblox scripter. And the first thing would be to just avoid bad code. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean building functions or globals, like let's say tick, which you shouldn't use because it's well inaccurate. Same with wait. If you want to wait one second and use the wait function for that, well, chances are you're going to wait a bit more than just one second. And there are just better alternatives to these two. For wait, you could use the task library and use task wait, or just build your own custom wait function with run service. And for that you could use a built-in Lua function which is OS clock. And usually things like this you will just learn with experience. So be sure to practice. Now another thing is repeating code and really bad code readability. So repeating code imagine you had a part and you wanted to reset its position and there would be two dependencies and you wanted to part to move to the player right and if it was close to the player after some time you would just do something or just reset its position when it wasn't close. So instead of just writing the reset logic over and over again you could just make let's say a function which will just reset the parts position and you would pass the part as a variable and if it comes to code readability like i'm gonna give you an advice to just look after it from the beginning because as a developer you're going to make a lot of projects that you are going to leave laying there for like some time and then whenever you come back to them you usually want to know what the code actually does instead of just looking at the script and wondering like who wrote this and not only that, imagine you want to learn new technologies. Let's say you wanted to maybe make a new system. So you go into studio, you make a new place. And let's say you wanted to make a map voting system, right? You do some scripting, do some research, then you do the system and then it's just there. And then imagine you wanted to make a game and it would require you to have a map voting system. So you would take it from that place and if it was really badly written, you wouldn't really know what it does. And it would be just a waste of time for you to, for you to study the code again. And not only that, imagine you wanted to make some changes to the system. Chances are you are probably going to leave it as is or just make new one from the scratch with the code reference but yeah nevertheless it's just a waste of time and if you are finding these tips helpful then consider leaving a like and subscribing because it would really help me and my channel out it also keeps me motivated to do videos like this for you guys so yeah now the next thing you should avoid is either too little or too many scripts like this has happened to me a countless of times where i would do a commission for someone right and they would invite me to a to a team create session right and imagine i was supposed to do something like put my code into the place i would just usually make my own folders for everything but imagine i just opened the server script service and there was like 50 different scripts from 20 different people there so i would usually just go like well i'm not gonna touch any of that i'm just gonna do my part but then i would have to do some testing and there would be parts of codes that would just interfere with my code and i would have to either ask the person that i would commission if they knew but if they didn't knew i would just have to look through every single script to basically just check which part was interfering with my code but yeah yeah, it was pretty awful and I've also had a lot of cases and seen like a lot of games that were basically just made with <laughs> one script and trust me you don't want to have everything like loading the player loading the map giving the player a gun handling score and having like an anti-cheat in just one script I recommend just learning what modular programming is and how to make certain managers for certain tasks with both of these cases whenever you would have to change something it would be really annoying to deal with and you would waste a lot of time searching for the right function and even even more trying to implement new things into the scripts or a script. Now this thing is pretty minor but I've seen a lot of people struggle with it too which are loop variables. So loop variables let's say you wanted to have this loop right here right and you wanted to affect the player data and you would change this v from the loop which is a loop variable and not the actual player data. And why? That's because this variable is only available in the loop in the loop scope and this is just a clone of the actual data. So you would only change it for this loop iteration and this wouldn't be the actual data that you want to change and now to change the actual data you would have to reference let's say the table that contains the player data that's outside of the scope so you would need to do player data table from v to actually change the player data table so yeah you would need to keep things like this in mind now this is a thing that i've seen a lot of developers not even know about or just struggle with and the things are memory leaks and what are memory leaks imagine you have a custom logic for loading the player's character Character, right you have the character auto load disabled from the player service and you load the player character through player that character so now whenever the player would die you would have custom respawn logic and imagine you wouldn't remove the player character after the player died so what's going to happen now now this is going to create both memory leaks on the server and the client which eventually will lead to ping and fps lags because the memory would just keep getting clogged up and it would happen to the point of the game being well unplayable and please just learn how to handle memory leaks instead 
instead of just resetting this server after some time. Well, because I've seen some people do that instead of just handling memory leaks, like they would just reset this server because they didn't know because they didn't know what caused the lag in their game, and their game would just get more and more laggy every hour. So yeah. And also, memory leaks appear most often with certain instance events, and there are many tools like Mate or Throw which just help you manage that. Now moving on to error handling. Remember when I told you about someone having like 50 scripts in a game? I had a case where someone had a virus and the virus just spread to different scripts and it would constantly just give errors in the output and imagine my script would also give an error because some code would interfere. Well now imagine when I was trying to determine what was causing a problem with my script, there would also be 50 different errors from all of these scripts in the output and I would have to just search through every single one which one was mine and it was basically just a pain in the ass. And like a lot of people just underestimate what errors actually do or mean and they usually tend to ignore them. But in reality you shouldn't. Because well the compiler is doing exactly everything you tell it to do and if it gives an error that means you messed something up. Well for those rare cases that whenever Roblox just breaks something but anyway. You need to learn how to handle errors and prevent them from happening and you can simply do by firstly researching the error, checking the documentation, the forum and so on. And you need to structure your code around it so you prevent it from happening because sometimes an error can just completely stop the logic that's, that's happening in a function or a system. And another recommendation is don't write everything into pickles. If you start doing it and just get into the habit, it's just gonna lead to a lot of bad practices. But well, with some experience you should learn how to handle errors really smoothly. And if you want to learn how to handle errors, you should just do some research. Because usually, well, most of this stuff is just going to be written in the documentation. And if it's not and you don't know how to deal with it, then you can always just ask on the dev forum. But yeah, when we are in this topic, what a pretty major mistake that a lot of people also do is just bad research. Or they just use bad or outdated sources. Like if you are a beginner and you don't really know what you are doing, chances are you are also looking in the wrong places. A lot of people just do incorrect phrasing for the stuff they want to do and they just can't really find a solution. And after that they usually just get stuck, then abandon what they were doing and just move to like a different thing and well, same issue there. And if you are starting off, I recommend searching for multiple topics regarding your issue, then just looking through the sources to determine which one works for you the best, because with that you might also get to know about other ways to resolve the problem or just learn about new interesting things or features. But yeah, like usual, I recommend just reading the documentation. And now this is a bit more of an advice, but people still seem to miss it out on, which is don't be afraid to ask for feedback. If you feel like there is something missing in your code or something doesn't run pretty well, you can go to the help and feedback section on the dev forum and just ask people there. Or just do something like me, which is to just encourage you guys to tell me what's wrong with my code or what can be done better. Because trust me, in programming there is just a lot of space for improvement. And yeah. And now for the last thing, which I'm gonna recommend, is to check out my video about five things I wish I knew sooner as a Roblox scripter, because I also talk about things that made me be a better developer there. So yeah, that's everything for today guys, and see ya!